Okay, so I actually know a little bit about this game going into it. Not a lot, though, because I've never actually played it. But today we're going to be looking at Paradroid. So let's start it up here. Got the warp speed going for the disc loading. Um, we're going to get out. Oh, we're going to get flashing is what we're going to get. <laughs> and now we're into a blank. Oh, never mind. <laughs> I had a weird blank screen for a second there. But now we're into a remember intro, which, you know, makes sense. Um, I think we've seen this intro before. That actually kind of explains a few things, because, like, I mean, we've seen a whole bunch of different intros going through all these different C64 games. So it kind of makes sense that they wouldn't make an intro every single time they cracked a game. They would use the same intro multiple times. I'm pretty sure we've seen this one before, just for a different game. Okay, let's move on from the intro there. That was a remember, so we might get some docks. Um, maybe? Oh. Okay, this one does looks like it might not have docks. <laughs> um, that might be unfortunate, but we'll see. So, I want to speed up the game. No high scores or trainers. Go high scores, so not to go do trainers all the time. Uh, so it's going to write the disc for a little, and then we'll get into it. Oh, that was fast. The Paradroid by Andrew Braybrook. So Houston Consultants presents Paradroid by Graphical Limited. Plug your joystick into port 2, fire to play, clear the freighter of robots by destroying them with twin lasers or by transferring control to them. Controls by joystick only as follows. At all times, joystick moves robot and holding fire down will allow use of lifts and consoles. In addition, pressing fire with the joystick center will print current robot for transfer. Contact with another robot with the button down will in- Wow, this is going really fast. <laughs> um, a fleet of robo -freight freighters on its way to the Beta City system reported entering an uncharted field of asteroids. Each ship carries a cargo of battle droids to reinforce the outworld defenses. Two distress beacons have been recovered. Similar messages were stored on each. The ships have been bombarded by powerful- This is going really fast. <laughs> like... <laughs> I know if I was reading this, like, not having to speak it aloud, I could probably do it, but that's some pretty fast, te fast text scrolling to deal with there. And for anyone who's about to say maybe it's going too fast because I'm on NTSC mode, no, I've actually got it in PAL mode. I checked that before loading this up, and this is a PAL version of the game. I don't know if there's an NTSC version. Like, it, it's Commodore 64 stuff, so it's like virtually everything is going to have a PAL version, but not everything's going to have an NTSC version, so I don't know. But yeah, it looks like there's actually a lot of instructional details here, and it's using kind of an interesting font. It almost looks like it's too big to fit within the usual limitations of the C64. Or maybe I'm wrong about that, and maybe it's just stylized very well to hide that fact, but... Oh wait, what? I, it was running by some controls right there, and apparently F7 is cheese? When the game is paused? What does that mean? <laughs> does it, like, show you, like, a picture of cheese or something? That was a weird control. But yeah, so we're back to the main title now, so it looks like we've gone through all of the, um, the briefing details. There's a lot of it. Um, let's just start up here. So, we've got our influence device. This is the... <laughs> <laughs> the text really goes by. Um, so let's actually see what that was about. Um, run stop is pause. If we hit F7, it says cheese. And then what? Yeah, I'm not sure what that does. Well, apparently there's a cheese feature that does nothing other than show the text cheese. Okay, then. Okay, so we got some other robots running around. Our robot here is the 001 robot. Um, they all look to be like two somethings. See, the number in the middle, this is, this is from what, yeah, as I said, I know a little bit about this game, but not a lot. The number that you see indicates what kind of robot you're controlling. So it's almost kind of like a, almost kind of like a Pokemon game almost, except you're only controlling one thing at a time. So if we interface with this computer here, so we see our ship is 
uh, unit 001 influence device. We can use the controls to see more of the data. So entry 01, class influence, height 1 meter, weight 27 kilograms, no drive, no brain. Even though it looks like it's attached to a head? Well, I guess that makes sense. And apparently it has an armament of lasers and no sensors. Robot activity influence device. This helmet is self-powered and will control any robot for a short time. Lasers are turret. Oh, lasers are turret mounted. <laughs> okay, so we need an extra page there. And we're currently on the stores deck. And it's, such, it's, it's interesting that we get this little map here because this is actually a really big ship from what I understand. Like this is just the single deck that we're on. So, and apparently alert status is green. Oh, and that actually shows us the rest of the ship. So yeah, you can see which deck we're on now. There's a lot to this place. And that's about the limit of my knowledge of this thing. There's all, I also know about the whole transferring to other robots and stuff. So, but I don't know exactly know how that plays. I've just sort of seen it. So we'll see how this goes. Um, let's actually transfer to one of these robots. So I think what we have to do is to hold down the button. Okay. Uh, let's transfer to... Oh, well, they're all clustered together. Uh, let's do this 247 here. So this is the unit that we currently control. We're going to transfer to a servant bot, apparently. Okay, color. Um, okay, all I can do is go left and right. Maybe it's asking which one I want to be. Oh, and now we're actually doing stuff. Okay, so I think what I have to do is punch in like certain... Okay, but then suddenly... Uh, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> well, that was quick. Okay, let's try that again. Um, maybe a 247 is not the one to go for. Let's go for a th Oh. Huh? Oh, to fire your lasers, you have to actually be moving when you push the button. Okay. So if you just hold it down, and that puts you in the transfer mode. Okay, so let's transfer to this 139. Maybe this will be easier. So apparently we're transferring to a disposal robot. I would think this would be easier than a servant bot. Okay, color again. So, I don't know, I think this one might be better, or maybe not. Okay, let's, um, let's do like that, and like that. Is that going to do anything? I'm not sure what's... Deadlock. Oh, because we have the same amount still set, maybe? Hmm. I think this time for color, I'm going to pick this side, the yellow side here. So let's do that. Let's directly... Okay, that's definitely going to be a deadlock. <laughs> okay, now this time... Oh, uh, hard to say, but I think I want the yellow side again. So let's do here. And then also here. Okay, I got a lot of yellow there. Did I actually win it this time? Um, complete. I'm getting points. And I'm, yeah, now I'm the 139 robot. So if we actually go to this computer terminal now, um, I guess it's got to be closer. And there, we get to see that we're unit type 139, disposal robot. So we're 1.22 meters, 61 kilograms, anti-grav drive with no brain, um, no armament. Yeah, that might be a problem. And we got spectral sensors um, created by Dr. Masternick to clean up large heaps of rubbish. Its large scoop is used to collect rubbish. It is then crushed internally. Interesting. Oh, wait, that's interesting. So, if I'm at the base screen of these robots, I can actually scroll up to the 139 that I currently am, or back down to 001, which is the influence device that I started as. But then there's also this 123 in here now, which is odd. 
Maybe being different kinds of robots actually lets you see information on other kinds? Maybe? Okay, so let's actually start moving around a bit. So let's go through some doors. Um, oh, that's interesting. Your vision actually gets blocked by doors and walls. You don't see that too often. Um, so I'm not sure if we're supposed to like destroy things. Oh, <laughs> well, that gets us points. Wait, I thought it said that this thing didn't have any armaments. Okay, so let's actually try to take control of one of these 249s now that we're in a better robot, maybe? <laughs> uh, I got a servant bot here. Let's see if we can actually transfer to it. So this time we got three pips to the enemy's five. Actually, I want to be the purple side because I think I see something that would be really good to get for. So if we go there, and then there, and there, I think that's going to do it. Well, we got more purple than yellow, so... Okay, we did it. So now we're the 249 bot. And let's go to this console and see if we can get some information about it. So unit type 249, service robot. Um, 1.63 meters, 83 kilograms, tripedal with neurotronic brain. No armament again, and spectral sensors. Cheaper version of the anti-grav servant robot. Okay then. And yeah, being in the 249 here also lets us see info on the 247, which is kind of like a floating version instead of a tripedal version, but otherwise has similar graphics. Like, I'm not sure how many different kinds of robots there are, but some of them are basically variations on others. And you know, it just occurred to me that maybe this influence device that we're using is actually attaching to these robots. And then that's what's giving us control because we still have, because that's the thing that's confusing me is it says here that this influence device has lasers, whereas every robot we've taken control of so far doesn't have lasers, but at the same time, we can fire lasers. So yeah, that's, that's, that's the theory I'm going with here is that we're actually, um, we're actually like mounting our little influence thing on top of and taking control like that. So I'm not sure like what exactly we're supposed to be doing. Can we actually like destroy some of these things here? No, they're just sort of there. Well, let's t check the map again just to see what's going on here. So we can see a little green dot over there. I don't, I can't actually control like a cursor or anything, so I can't see anything. I think those L's are lifts that'll take us to different decks. So why don't we try that? So head out the door here. Oh wait, that's an alert light thing. And it's still green, so I'm not sure what's up with that. Okay, there's a couple weird things in there. Let's actually check that out first. So if we touch them, nothing seems to happen. Um, if we hold down for transfer, that doesn't seem to do anything either. Shooting them doesn't seem to do anything. Not quite sure what that's about. Maybe it respawns robots or something? Okay, so the lift that's lit up is the one that we're taking right now. And that gives us access to these decks. Um, well, let's go up to the bridge. Let's see what's up there. Okay, we got a five, some 516s. Let's try to take over a 516. So we're currently a servant robot, and crew droid. This is the unit we're going to control. Okay, the whoa, the crew droid has twice as many pips as I do. Uh, actually, I want the purple side. Definitely want the purple side. So we'll go there and there, and then take over there. Oh, I forgot to get my last one in. Okay, it's still deadlocked, so that gives us another chance at least. Looks like they're evenly matched this time. No, purple side. Definitely purple side. So we'll go there. And then we'll try this one. Here. And here. Okay, I think I got it. Yeah, I got seven, he's got five. Okay, so we got the 516 spot. And we still got lasers. Oh! What just happened? 
I know what, this is a very small deck. Maybe I actually took out all the robots on the deck? And that sort of cleared the deck? Wait, is that what I'm supposed to be doing? Am I supposed to be, like, just destroying all of the robots on the ship? Oh wow, so having control of this crew droid actually gives us access to a lot more droid info. So we got maintenance robots, several of them. We got messenger robots, servant robots, disposal robots. Actually, that's interesting. I'm noticing with these different robot types, the first digit is specifically the kind of robot. So, ones are disposal, twos are servants, threes are messengers, fours are maintenance, and fives are crew. And then the second and the third number clearly have some sort of meaning, but I'm not sure what yet. Okay, so let's take the lift again. Let's go to this floor and see what we got here. So, let's go to the console. We're on the bridge now. Okay, so the bridge is not the very top. Um, we got a number of rooms here. One of the rooms has a dot in the middle. That might be interesting to take a look at. Well, let's see if we can do some damage here. So, whoa! That's a... ow! Okay, I want that robot. Whatever it is, I want it. Because <laughs> it's got a weapon of some sort that's different than what we've got. Sentinel droid. Ooh, maybe this will be tricky to capture. Well, let's see. Um, definitely want the purple side. So let's start off with a couple like that. And then let's keep on doing... Okay, I think I deadlocked it. It's actually a little tricky to get your pips to go where you want them to because it scrolls really fast. Um, definitely want the yellow side this time. So let's start a couple purples. And then let's go for the big one right there. Okay, did I win? Ah, oh, no, I deadlocked it again. Darn it. Because, yeah, it scrolls really fast with these, so you gotta be very careful with your movements. Actually, I think I got it that time. Oh, yeah, I definitely got it that time. <laughs> okay, so I'm now this 614 robot, but it seemed like it had maybe a special weapon of some kind. Um, bipedal neutronic. Armament, laser rifle, with spectral and subsonic sensors. So maybe that means it'll actually let us detect things we couldn't with the other one. So it says here, low security sentinel droid used to protect areas of the ship from intruders, a slow but sure device. Okay. So do we have this new weapon now? Oh yeah, we got a new laser weapon now. Now there's also that 711 over there. A spectral. Those... Whoa. What just happened there? The screen flashed and everything... Sort of disappeared? Okay, so we got a 296. That means it's going to be a... Whoa, something just shot at me. Well, it's a 615. It's a slightly different version of the bot that I've got. Yeah, I'm not sure why my robot is flashing. But I'm going to guess it's not a good thing. <laughs> um... Yeah, let's... Let's take... Oh, whoops. Oh. Okay. You know what the flashing is now. The flashing means you are close to dead. <laughs> and then I got shot and died. But I noticed for a second there that it actually brought me back to that 001. So I think my idea that it was actually, like, attaching to the robot, and then the robot got destroyed, I was back to the 001 form, and then that got destroyed, and then it's game over. Okay, yeah, the instructions actually do explain what I had thought was going on. So your influence device does actually, like, attach to the robot and take control of it, but it can only do it for a limited time, apparently. So that flashing was... My guess is what's going on is that flashing was indicating that I was going to lose control, but that your control is kind of, like, probably tied to your health. So the more you get hit, the more control you lose until you lose control entirely and it blows up the robot. Pretty sure that's what's going on. Uh, yeah, the, the basic gist is just destroy all the robots. So, <laughs> once you have con like, you could technically destroy them as your 001 robot, it's just not a good idea. But, okay, that's interesting. Um, this was not where we started the last time. 
Is your starting location, like, random or something? I gotta find a computer console to figure out what's going on here. Like, that's where I am. I definitely did not start in the same location as last time. Hmm. Uh, th this, this isn't looking like it's gonna work out. <laughs> um, nope, did not work out. So is that like an immediate game over? Yeah, it's an immediate game over. Whoops. <laughs> okay, it also occurs to me that maybe going for a, a more impressive robot right from the start is probably a bad idea. Because I got a funny feeling those pips you get are based on the kind of robot you're taking on. A 329. Maybe 329 is better? Or we just destroyed it. Okay, there's another 296. Maybe we'll have a better luck with the 296 if we're a disposal robot. <laughs> I mean, as long as we get just one extra pip to... Because it had five, right? Yeah, we got three now. Okay, we want the yellow side. Because I absolutely want to take that one. And we're going to grab that. And this one. Oh yeah, I way more, way more um, <laughs> power than I needed there, but that's good. Not to mention, it looks like the enemy sort of gave me some power there. Either way, I got a 296 now, so we should be able to blast most of the enemies here. I still don't know what these things are about, but maybe we'll find out at some point. Okay, so it is a little tricky firing the weapons since it's a, a whole one-button affair, right? So you hold the button to do your transfer, but you have to, like, tap the button to do an attack. And the trick there is that it's not an immediate attack. And there seems to be a delay before you can attack again. So it definitely takes a bit of getting used to firing your weapons. Like, it's not impossible by any stretch. You just have to be a little more careful about your aim and everything. Can we just totally take it over completely? Oh, jeez. <laughs> Complete takeover. <laughs> yeah. Um... Do we get bonus points for that? Oh, we got bonus points for something. The screen went yellow and everything went dark. Well, maybe that was the last robot again. Like, maybe that's what's going on, is it goes dark and the screen border goes yellow whenever you actually, like, get rid of all of the... What is going on? Oh. Okay, this is like a repair or a recharge thing. You hover your droid over it, and it takes some points away to restore you to a stronger status. That kind of makes sense. The only thing that bugs me is that, how can you see what your status even is? Like, there's nothing on screen to indicate, like, what your repair status is. And if we go over to that computer terminal that's in here... And we go up here. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's anything in here that, like, shows your status. Okay, yeah, so in this room, there's, like, this thing here. The transfer doesn't seem to do anything. If I shoot it, yeah, still nothing happens. Okay, so let's go to this deck. Um, don't know what deck we're on, but we'll probably find out at some point. Okay, we got some consoles here, so we're on the state rooms deck. Okay. Uh, ah, I was having trouble controlling it. It's, it's moves extremely fast. Okay, so that apparently put us back into our 001 form. Um, we're never going to get a 420 with 001. Um, now what? And it's just barely, but that's going to count as a win. Okay, so we're going to grab the 139 bot. And then maybe we can do a little better here? Although something I noticed there is that I actually had three pips, even though I'm pretty sure the 139's not su the 001 was only supposed to have two. I did clear a floor. Like maybe as you make progress, it raises the number of pips you have in those hacking sessions. Okay, I think that worked. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I only have like a very vague idea of what's going on with this wiring stuff. Okay, so let's actually shoot some of these bots down. Now that we have the now that we have a better bot to do it with. Oh wait, that's an 854? Okay, um not tangly with an 854. <laughs> oh geez. Um The eight 
Uh, there's some pretty tough stuff on this deck. <laughs> Maybe I should get off this deck, because that was a bit of a tough robot to see. Um, where's the lift? There's the lift. Okay, let's, let's get off this deck. <laughs> okay, this was a bad idea to go here. Okay, those 302s move really fast, which is kind of annoying, because if they bump into you, it actually makes it difficult to shoot them. Okay, let's grab the 420, because I think we can take a 420 now. And these 420s take two shots from the laser turret. Okay, there we go. We actually cleared the deck. So let's see if we can get ourselves re-energized. Because I don't know if the lasers actually use energy or not. I can't imagine they wouldn't. Oh no, they actually don't, because I'm hovering over the thing now and I'm not losing any energy. Or not losing any points to restore energy. So that's interesting. Ooh, but we got another 516. Yeah, I think we'll stick with the 476. Like, the 516 might be stronger, but then it seems like the last two digits are more important to how powerful you are than the first digit. Okay, so I'm low on energy, so let's go over the thing. Okay, that flashing really does mean that you're low on energy. So, we'll recharge, however long it takes. It looks like I'm doing a lot of recharging here. Okay, fully charged. Now we can take on these enemies with a little, little less risk. Oh, that was it? Oh, apparently there wasn't a lot of droids, droids on this one. Oh, Robo Stores. Interesting. Yeah, I definitely wanted to be on the purple side for this one, because as I'm putting my pips in here, yeah, that was, that was pretty easy to take some things away there. Okay, so now we're a 571. We can probably blast that 139 easily. But there doesn't seem to be much else on this side. Except for another one of these things in the floor that I still have no idea what they do. So I think we've seen a good amount of the game by this point. So I'm not sh I don't think I want to go through and try to clear the entire ship because this looks like it might take a while. <laughs> but I can see how you can certainly get sucked into this game for sure. Like the whole... The whole mechanic of the different kinds of droids that you take control of. And the hacking minigame is a little weird. Like, it's a little too fast-paced, I think. But at the same time, it's pretty simple when it comes down to it. Like, it looks complicated. But it's actually a lot simpler than it looks. So, I don't know. Like, the game, the game works for what it is. It controls mostly fine. There's a little bit of delay trying to shoot weapons or trying to get your transfer going, but at the same time, it almost seems like the enemy robots have similar delays going on because they don't seem to fire that fast. They are kind of annoyingly accurate with their shots, though. So, but yeah, that was Paradroid. It's a pretty fun game for what it is. It's a little slower paced. I understand why there's a speed up option. And the whole notion of, like, collecting the different robots and, oh, apparently you lose energy just by moving around. Oh, wait, why aren't these recharging me? Uh, maybe there's actually two different ways to... And now I'm still, like, why can't I recharge? Why are these not working? <laughs> What is going on? I was trying to do my outro and all of a sudden things went really weird. And I kind of got destroyed trying to find an energy recharge elsewhere. So, I don't know. <laughs> Clearly there's more to this game than it looks, but it seems simpler than it looks. So if, if that makes any sense. Let's just put it this way. The game plays fine.